Hey Aries, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. As always, Aries, these readings are timeless, my love. So when you get here is when you get here, past, present, or future. And there will be an extended to this reading. The link for that's gonna be in the description box below. I feel like you're gonna have a, an interesting read, Aries. I'm not gonna lie to you. One, you want the Mystical Shaman Oracle deck. So that already tells me that you're you're in an interesting energy. It is a Virgo full moon the day that I'm filming this. So that is that is very interesting. Um, <sighs> on your shuffle, Mancy Aries, you had some like real sad songs. I'm not gonna lie. And then you had Seven Nation Army come on by the White Stripes. So there is this idea of like warfare, spiritual warfare, psychic attack, or feeling at the very least like you're trying to um, fight against negative thoughts or thought patterns or um, self-deprecation or feelings of... Um, defeatism you're really trying to fight against it but it does feel like you're still kind of dipping back into this like pool maybe of a um, um despair or feeling um uninspired or, or unencouraged and um you there's something about bonsai trees bonsai trees is coming up for you you might want to get a plant maybe you need to ground a little bit um uh virgo full moons talk a lot about cleansing out your space um, which helps kind of cleanse out your your mind, right? If you clear external clutter, you can kind of clear up a little bit of that internal clutter as well. So you might want to get a bonsai tree. Um, bonsai trees are also very symbolic of ordered thoughts. It feels like your thoughts, again, are very cluttered. You're like, I'm sad, but I'm angry, but I'm pushing through and I'm optimistic. It's like, woo! It's like all over the place a little bit. Um, so that might be something you want to get. But, um, oh, they don't throw cards at me. Don't do that. Um, but it's about really ordering your thoughts, ordering your thoughts. And then before I had started filming, they they pointed out the time on the clock for me. And it was 1.44 p.m. And um, that as sort of an angel number talks about being more like efficient in your work. And for, for a second, I thought they were throwing shade at me. And I'm like, but I've been super efficient all week in my work. I've been so efficient. I actually was able to carve out like extra like me time. And then I realized it was talking about you, um, that you might be overloading yourself, like almost trying to work yourself, almost working yourself into a frenzy by trying to work your way out of your circumstances, thereby causing yourself even more clutter, even more confusion, like burying yourself almost like quicksand. It's like a quicksand energy. Like the harder you work, like the farther you sink in. It feels a little bit like that. And so we really, we really want to focus. We really want to focus on that today. Um, so you had two cards so rudely flown on the floor. So let's pray and then we'll, we'll take a look at these, at these bad boys. Father God, thank you for bringing me and Aries in today. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aries' highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Aries. So, I feel like I need to drink some water. If you are feeling like this, try and drink more water, especially during, like, big moon cycles. Um, it'll help, like, uh, stuck energy kind of flow. Also, I know the collective as a whole is terribly dehydrated, myself included. It's essential. So, let's look at these cards. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get cozy, Aries, because like we really we we gotta break some stuff down. Okay, so the first card that you have out is the rainbow. It's card number forty one, and that breaks down to a five. The thing that is interesting that it came out in reverse, and I never take these cards in reverse, but the rainbow frequency is the highest of consciousness. It's the highest of frequencies that you can write on. It's directly connected to the Christos, the Christ consciousness, right? Pure freedom, love. Um, empathy, compassion, potential, like all of the good stuff that God has for us. And again, it's this feeling of like, you can't like you're, you're, you, it's on the board, right? It's like, you can touch it, but then you slip back in, you can touch it and then you slip back in. It's, it's like, I can see it, but I can't like believe it enough. And so I'm just dipping back into this energy and 41 that breaks down to a five. It's the change, right? That there might be like a lot of things like changing in your environment or it feels like inside of you. Again, that's part of these cluttered thoughts is that, it's almost as though your your perspectives and your feelings and everything are being kind of shaken loose in you like a wheat from the tear, right? So almost as though, so that way they can be purged out. Anything that needs to be like, get out of you, it's almost like it's been so stuck. It's been so dense. It's been so ingrained in you, some of these 
mindset, some of these beliefs, some of these emotions hidden deep down in the recesses of your spirit that it's almost the idea that God had to like come in and like shake them loose, some of them. So that way they actually could be purged, right? It's that kind of thing. And perhaps sitting in this emotional process is allowing um, that loosening to, to be happening. And that's kind of cluttering up some of your thoughts because it's like, Thoughts of the future and being positive and optimistic and your potential are coming into conflict with um, all of the realizations of things that happened in the past and all of these revelations that you're having about maybe how you co-contributed to some of your own toxicity or situations in the past, right? But they're almost showing me of um, like a pot when like you burn something in a, in a pot or, or a pan and then you have to soak it in a sink, right? Because that water, letting the water sit, it loosens up the things that are burnt, things that are no good anymore, things that are stuck. So that way the soap can come in and it can cleanse it and you can put something new, cook something new up for yourself. But there is a change in that. There is an alchemization that usually comes through conflict. That usually comes through friction, right? It's like when you're in a plane and it starts at ground level, right? And then it starts to ascend. And as it does that, the plane kind of shakes a little bit because of the acceleration, because of the um, 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 altitude. Thank you. Thank you. The altitude of it, right? Um, you hit a little bit of turbulence and it's uncomfortable, right? It's like your head hurts a little bit. Your ears start to pop. It, it's that It's that kind of energy. Um, and so that's part of this like internal discomfort that it seems like you're feeling. And so the way that you're trying, everyone's trying to be a Capricorn this week. So the way you're trying to work through it is by trying to keep yourself busy and almost like overload your plate. Um, almost thinking like the harder you work, the, the further you'll get through and past this energy when in reality it's actually to be more like the arrow and pull it back a little bit take some things off of your plate because it's just adding to the discomfort it's adding to the stress um it's almost like burying it deeper and deeper it's like putting more things in the pot instead of letting what's already burnt kind of come up if that makes any sense you're compressing it more um trying to work through it that way as opposed to um taking some things off of your plate getting back down to really focusing, not look, not harboring stuff from the past, feeling stuck in the past, mourning over it. Also not being so far into the future that you forget to be present in the moment, right? To look at what's happening inside of you. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling like this? Why do I feel like shit? Why am I sad? And then a half hour later, I feel angry. And then I feel hopeful. It's like, why am I going through these waves? Where are they coming from? How do I process these emotions? How do I make sense of them intuitively with my logical mind in conjunction, right? So that way I can make sense of them and then purge them. I can't figure out where I need healing, right? Some of this uh, chi Chiron energy, Chiron, whatever. Um, it's, it's been coming through a lot this week, right? A lot of these inner child woundings um, and how they've been replaying for everyone in the collective. Because again, Virgo, full moon in Virgo, Virgo's really detail oriented. It's like that routine. It's the receipts. It's where does this come from? Where was the original um, purchase of this, of this trauma, of this wounding? And for most of us, it comes through our childhood, right? And then it replays in different places, in different faces as we go on throughout our lives. Um, which is why it's like, I know God loves me. It's like, I know that I have a lot of potential. I know that I have a, a real future. I know that there can be real love and success and purpose in my life. But every time I, I like get like a little taste of it, it falls through my hands because you're not recognizing, right? I'm not recognizing, I'm like speaking first person as you, that there, there's all this dense energy at the bottom, right? It looks like stuff that's burnt at the bottom of the pan that it needs to kind of be shooken up it needs to come up to the surface so that way it can be healed it can be brushed away it can be cleaned resurfaced resurfaced right that's part of this orderly thoughts thing that your thoughts aren't aren't going to get more orderly the more you um put on your plate the busier you keep yourself you're just going to find new things more things to do to come in conflict with the stuff that you're already not doing addressing or processing does that make sense i hope that makes sense to you and, you know, on this card, this bird looks a little bit like a parrot. And parrots often are very symbolic of mimicking. In, in what ways have you been mimicking behaviors, perspectives, lifestyle choices, perhaps, um, that you learned through your family dynamics, that you learned through social dynamics as a child, as an early adolescent, right? 
that you've been mimicking, you've been reproducing um, because of how you were nurtured as opposed to how, what is like your actual true nature. And there is a certain amount of reparenting that needs to go on for you right now. It feels like you learning how to reparent yourself or allowing God to come in and like reparent you in some aspects to shift some of those dynamics for you, to shift some of those dynamics for you. Because the next card that you have after that, which is interesting that those are actually, you have card number 41 and then you have card number 42. So one, two, and fours represent foundation. So it's the beginning of a new foundation. All this discomfort you're feeling, that's a lot of geese. Mother goose, right? It's like this mothering, this nurturing that what's coming for you, learning how to re-nurture yourself um, and address and identify feelings, right? Imagine if, you know, you, maybe you have a child or imagine you had a younger sibling or, or younger cousins or something and they were upset and they were heartbroken and people were mean to them or made them feel a certain kind of way. Would you just tell them to just shut up, just get over it, move on, just keep yourself busy? No, you wouldn't tell them that. You would hold them. You'd love them. You'd comfort them. You'd tell them to sit with that emotion, work their way through it, heal from it. But you have to be able to say the same thing to yourself, right? It's about your inner child. Your inner child feels like abandoned and wounded and all of these things, which is why you've had a hard time like really holding on to the rainbow frequency, holding on to the idea of that potential, that vibration that just keeps slipping down because of the density. So the shaking, again, the altitude is very uncomfortable, but it's extremely necessary. Lean into it. It's a Virgo full moon. We have to order our thoughts. And a lot of times that talks about also ordering our environments, right? So it has to do with your schedule, working more effectively and efficiently. 144, right? 44. About, um, a lot of times it's about working smarter, not harder. That's something I had to learn a little bit this week with my schedule as well. Um, and you know, it's a good full moon for like cleaning your space, right? You could have a lot of stuff in your space that is really energetically kind of jamming you up as well. And I've mentioned this a billion times and I'm going to mention it again to you, Aries. You're probably gonna have three cards in your whole, in your whole read. Um, that if you have anything, cause there were those sad songs on your supplements. If you have anything in your environment that was given to you, gifted to you, left at your place from someone that you don't talk to anymore or someone that, and I don't mean like a close family member that passed on, I don't mean that, but from like an old lover or an old partner or an old friend that you have, you still have unresolved feelings about. Maybe there's some bad blood there. Maybe there's some, their energy is still attached to it. You need to purge it out. Take this full moon as like a spring cleaning like get out of jail free card. If anyone gives you a problem, bring them to me. I'll write you a note. If there's anything in your environment, your girlfriend left a hoodie at your house. She left something there. Your ex, he left his sweatpants. You like to wear them when you're on your period. Screw it. Take them, throw them out. Their energy is still attached to it. It's clogging up your space. If again, do your laundry, clean out some of your clothes, junk drawers, like all of that stuff, it will help. And again, bringing in some plants, like new life, new life. And the thing that's beautiful about plants, and this is how they taught me how to really um, try and work more on my feminine energy, because I personally sit in a lot of masculine energy, which most Aries do as well, because you are represented by the divine masculine energy, which is the emperor, um, is get plants, because it teaches you how to take care of something. It teaches you how to nurture something, right? Which is a good way, in a very simple and wholesome way, to teach you how to nurture mother, parent, love and care for yourself, right? Just as God is trying to do for you. And it also creates a small amount of routine and structure so that way you can, again, work efficiently, more effectively. And it also helps clear the oxygen in your space and in your area. It is like actual life. There's, 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 real, there's real life here growing, right? So it's just something that's bringing in so strongly for me. So I'm just doing it. But again, fours represent foundation. You're, you're, Shaking out the old so you can create new foundations on solid footing. And one is brand new. And then two is balance. So it's being shooken up so you can have a new foundation that can begin to be established. Moving forward into a foundation that is balanced. More balanced. More cohesive. More harmonious than the old foundations in relationships, in your environment, in your career, in the way you treat yourself. We're in the past because this card is the rainmaker. Exactly like... What I was saying before, right? It's that cleansing energy. Rain represents cleansing, soothing. It's like an emotional bomb. It's like the water 
right, that we put into that pot to kind of release it. And then we take new fresh water and then we clean it out so it can be used for something new, a new meal, something that will nourish you, your body, your mind, your soul. Virgo, sixth house, health, right? This is about also establishing healthier mindsets. This is through orderly thought, thoughts, healthier schedules, work-life balance, spiritual practical balance, healthier relationships with yourself, with other people as well. And the way that they really want it to happen for you is they want it to be almost like ballet. She's, there's like a flow. Do you see how there's a flow happening between her? And it's almost like there's this little burst of water between her two hands as well. Um, which talks about um, like your your hands are your my hands are getting hot now. Um, my hands are getting really hot. It's about like this energetic exchange happening for you between your physical and your spiritual body, your higher self, and your and your kind of physical self. Also, more of um an emotional energy reciprocity equilibrium. Not only in you, but in your relationship with others. Not taking things so personally. Some of you are working through not taking things so personally as well. And it's almost like getting your wings back. She has these wings. A lot of this is about getting your wings back as well. There's a lot. There's a whole lot happening. But again, there is something about a flow. A flow, a ballet. Again, it's like this balance. I don't know if you guys are dancers. But I, I danced for many, many, many years and... It's the idea of like, they're giving it to me like when you do a dress rehearsal or when you go to class and you learn a new routine and everyone's bumping into each other and you don't quite have the steps and you're kind of frustrated and it's a little clunky and you know, it's not streamlined and it's not orderly and it doesn't really look right and you're not, you're stepping on your own toes. But eventually, right, repetition, schedule and the way that you learn a routine, they don't just throw it all at you all at once. They'll show it to you all at once, right? Like kind of here's the big picture, guys. And then they break it down step by step by step so you understand the routine in an orderly way so as you learn it it becomes streamlined right they don't overwhelm you all, all at once they give you the first part and then the next part and then the next part it's this pacing energy they don't just bury you under the choreography it's this pacing so by the end you've hit a flow you've hit a rhythm you understand each mechanism the foundation of the number the beats the tempos, the footwork, how it works with other people that are also in the in the choreography, in the number, in the act with you, right? This is a lot of, um, I talk about how like the cosmic stage, right? This is a lot about going back to dress rehearsal for a brand new show for you, Aries. That seems to really be what's happening. And a lot of this is cleansing out um, the other the other acts, the other shows that perhaps you were not picked for or perhaps where you don't feel as though you performed your best if that makes any sense to you. And there's also a lot about forgiveness here, right? Um, God can forgive you. He can soothe you. He can heal you. He can do all of these things. It's, it's, his, it's his good and kind nature to do so. But there's also something about you releasing yourself, you forgiving yourself. So often God forgives us, but we don't receive it because we don't feel as though we deserve it. So we don't take our healing. We don't take our forgiveness. They really want you to get a plant. And there's also something about movement. Again, Virgo, sixth house, that physicality. They want you to move more. I don't know if they want you. Maybe you need to go for more walks. Maybe, I mean, we could all work on our sixth house. I mean, we've all been quarantined for a long time, right? But they want you to move more. Maybe they actually want you to dance. Like there's something about like, just put on Earth, Wind, and Fire and just shaking it out to September, right? Or like put on some Cardi B or just like do something about move, move your body. You got to move your body around. Black Eyed Peas? Okay, somebody, you maybe you should listen to Black Eyed Peas. They're bringing in Black Eyed Peas. Or maybe that's like symbolism, like the food, the Black Eyed, like the Black Eyed Peas is a food symbolism. You might have to look that up for yourself, but you're saying, oh, get it started. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> get it let's get it started in here let's get it started <laughs> let's see what you didn't get started ah <laughs> you've probably been telling you to do that for a while and you haven't oh that's funny oh <laughs> let's get it started in here okay <laughs> tell me to read it that is ridiculous that's funny the rainbow and the rainmaker what letter is that in the alphabet? I don't know. Let me say, hold on. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, 18, 18, 18, 1, 8, 1, 8. They do that. It's like my Nancy Drew thing. They'll help me convert letters into angel numbers. 18, 18. So you might want to look up 144. Well, I already told you what it is, but you know, for yourself. Um, Look up the symbolism behind black eyed peas because that still feels important. Also, get started um and dance maybe get a bonsai tree and look up 1818 as an angel number 1818 i'm gonna that's gonna be your homework on top of cleaning your room um two card spread aries look at that a girl who can do both so i'm gonna leave it here i'm gonna go over the patreon and i'm gonna keep pulling cards for you because i, I want to refine this more especially because you had two cards um I can't, it's gonna feel like night and day. Come on, it's gonna feel like night and day. I digress. Focus, focus. So yeah, I'm gonna go on the Patreon. I'm gonna keep pulling cards for you guys to see um, how else we can best help you work through these energies. Let me know how you guys are doing with the full moon energies. Let me know um, if you are gonna implement anything new. Let me know what you're doing. I love you guys. I like to, I like to keep up with you to make sure you're doing all right. Um, so if you're interested in your extended reading or any of the monthly readings coming up in March, the link for the Patreon will be in the description box, along with all my social media links, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, all the decks that I use on the channel. This is the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Um, and uh, my email for personal readings in case you're interested in a personal reading for March. And Aries, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful full moon. I hope you get it started. Um, and I hope you're doing good. As always, stay prayed up. Stay blessed. Stay sweet. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.